wondering why we've ended up on the beautiful but isolated islands of Curaçao and Bonaire to study anolis lizards. Well, here we are observing two species that are found only in this region. And these are two of over 400 species of anolis lizards. The genus Anolis supports lizards that can be found from the southeastern United States through the Amazon rainforest in South America, including the Caribbean islands, which are most densely populated with anoles. For this project, we are specifically contrasting the species of Anolis lineatus of Curaçao and Aruba and Anolis bonarensis of Bonaire, which are both found in very limited ranges. The evolutionary stories of these two species are similar. They are both descendants from mainland ancestors. So the question at hand is whether these species have more in common with their mainland ancestors or each other. In other words, has convergent evolution caused these two anoles to adapt to their island habitat, or do they bear more resemblance to their original founding populations? Our mission study the behavior of said anoles, record data on their habitats, measure their physical abilities, and prove, is it geography or genetics? We take data in the field, first by taking measurements of the lizard's perch, such as its perch height and the diameter of the perch, and we also take data by marking down specific information about the lizard, such as its sex, um, the location, the time we started filming, the date, and its field number. And finally, we use this uh, apparatus called a densiometer, which allows us to see how much open sky the lizard can see from its perch. Oh. We're currently videotaping lizards so that we can now go back and analyze the film to look for their behavior. Some of their behaviors include running, walking, crawling, sitting, pooping, mating, eating, and jumping. Here are some examples of common behaviors taken from footage we captured in the field. Running is when the anole moves at top speed, while walking is a steady pace. and crawling is the slowest movement. Jumping is when all four limbs leave the surface as it moves to a new perch. Males, and less commonly females, display by bobbing their heads and showing their dewlaps. This behavior is a sign of aggression towards the same sex, or can be part of the mating ritual if directed at the opposite sex. Other behavior types we observed include eating, mating, and even pooping. Now let's explore the differences between the two species. First, we'll examine the physical characteristics of Anolis bonarensis, then comment on the asymmetrical dewlap of Anolis lineatus. Anolis bonarensis proved itself to be a cryptic and skittish species, especially in comparison to Anolis lineatus. The mottled grain black bonarensis fit into the trunk ground ecomorph, although interestingly enough, their legs were shorter in relation to other trunk ground ecomorph anoles. Although we found most in areas from the trunk of the tree to the leaf litter or rock piles below it, we did find some in high up branches or palm fronds. In terms of physical appearance, males and females of Anolis bonarensis were virtually non dimorphic, with the largest difference being in dewlap size and color. Males had a large yellow dewlap, while females had smaller gray dewlaps. Otherwise, body size and color remained relatively similar, as females could often be mistaken for small males. On this island, 
we found another species of Anolis lizards which we studied, the Anolis lineatus. This species was especially interesting because of its dewlap asymmetry, with one side being more predominantly white scaled than the other. The Anolis lineatus is one of 400 Anolis species, yet it is the only one with an asymmetrical dewlap. It is found in the Caribbean, and more specifically on the islands of Aruba and Curaçao. After analysis, we found that the Anolis lineatus were much more left side predominantly white than we had thought. After studying 142 samples of both male and female, we found that 105 of them had this left sided quality, meaning that for every one right sided Anolis lineatus, there were at least three left sided ones. This data that we have collected has many possible uses. Here to talk about it is Professor Jonathan Lossis of Harvard University. So Anolis lineatus has an asymmetric dewlap. One side is orange, the other side is white. Sometimes it's the left side that's white, sometimes the right side. Our question was, do they show one side prefer preferentially to other lizards? Do they usually show the white side or the orange side? To test this idea, we put a stimulus animal in front of adult male Anolis lineatus, and we recorded which side of the dewlap they showed, the white side or the orange side. What we found was that about two-thirds of the lizards showed their white side to the, other to the stimulus animal. Now, this result was not statistically significant, but it certainly was suggestive of a preference for showing the white side. However, our team is just now getting started analyzing all the data we've collected in the field. We hope to soon answer our original question on whether these species share more characteristics with each other or their mainland ancestors. We're sure that the data we've collected will yield some valuable and interesting conclusions.